Hey, we are live. Hey, y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to the Midwest Tool Collectors Association National Meet. This is the Thursday Toolgate sale, and we're going to be able to here with my son, Arthur. And uh, the two of us are going to do the walk around, which I try to do for all of these tool sales. Um, so the national meet, there is a tailgate session on Thursday where you can walk around and buy tools out of the back of people's cars. Um, and this, this is the good time. This is where kind of people bring out the junky stuff, the cheaper value stuff, the, the stuff that they don't want to carry inside, a lot of the bigger tools that they don't want to carry inside. And so this is where I can actually go and um, usually get the better sales. Um, so we're going to be having a little bit of fun. I'm going to walk around and show this off. And then tomorrow morning, I'm also going to be doing one at the indoor sale. Um, you can see here we're at the convention center. So we're going to be doing this um, inside there. Um, if you'd like to find out more about where to buy hand tools, I have a website called handtoolfinder.com. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. And it is a list of every place I know of around the world to buy hand tools, meats like this, and other things around. So um, definitely take a look at it. So it's actually... Uh, set this up so that I can uh, super chat, live chat, none all messages are visible, there we go hey, All right, now I'm going to uh, turn this around and we can actually go through the sale here if you see something you have questions about feel free to ask and uh, we will go through it all so, uh, yeah, here's a, a full set, or a half set of hollows and rounds um, actually they're missing no, it is a half set, uh, 350 bucks bunch of molding planes and there's a lot of things on here that are just like oh what is that I don't know what that is um, chat hide all messages okay trying to make sure the messages are there um, if I miss a question you have go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, post it again five dollars each for dividers yeah this is this is kind of cool it's a whole set of curvatures and arcs uh, that's interesting. We're looking for a hammer for Arthur. Arthur, show him what you bought. What'd you buy? What is it? A tape measure. A tape measure? <laughs> Stanley 45, set of irons. Oh, here's a cool set. Auger bits. 65 bucks. Is there any good? That's actually a really good deal. This one's fun because the uh, the bottom case actually swings open. Let's see if I can get it here. There it goes. I need to come out that way. And that's how it Jennings closes. Styles bits. I'll open this up. Arthur, no, I said don't touch. Back up, bud. You can hear me say a lot, a lot. Uh, don't touch, Arthur. Don't touch, Arthur. <laughs> Back up and don't touch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stanley number seven with the box. It's kind of cool. Yes, on that. The Two fifty. Big lava. Pretty standard price. So I'd love to buy a really bad, trashy plane today and do a restoration video taking pure rust. I want to make a bellows sometime. That'd be kind of fun to put together. Do some leather working on there. And uh, a draw knife. I've been wanting to get one of these with the, the, the handle covers. Uh, there are a lot of rotor planes here today. I've seen them all the way down from $25 up to $125. Uh, there's quite a few of them around here. Small hand saws. Okay, we got more auger bits. There are a lot of auger bits here today. Um, not just here, but other places. So. Five dollars. I don't know if that's a box or each. Chisels, ten bucks a piece. Ten bucks a piece. Five dollars a piece. Squares, two for five dollars. Ten dollars each. Yeah. Hand planes, ten bucks each. Hand planes, five dollars each. I might get one of these. See if there's one that would be. Rusty enough to do a re revenge. Yeah, they're users. You won't find any valuable parts in there. I'm looking for one that's bad to do a restoration on. Doing a video on it.
bad enough to do a restoration on that. Oh, like this one. Look at that. Yeah, the worse, the better. You want to make sure that all the all the parts that's what I'm looking at. Have because, you know, yeah. Some of them have just some of them just need cleaning. These are harder to find. Yeah, I might be back for that one. Now, I'm always looking for a good restoration video. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope I cool axes. I didn't sleep well oh. I might miss you, but you know. You'll, Check out those ads. You'll snag the good ones. Leave me behind. <laughs> Here we go. Number 80. Out the parts. Hey, John. Five bucks. Quickly put a few thumb screws on it. Ooh, that's pretty. Some good deals. I gotta go to the right, let's come around here. Yeah, if any of you have any questions or thoughts, um, go ahead and put them up there. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat or try to. Um, sometimes the chat is hard to keep up with. But uh, hey, Germany, good to have you in here. Try to do it a little earlier today so that we can have other people from other countries. Come on, Arthur. Come on, bud. Hey, the duck, how's it going? We are having a lot of fun here today. So, one dollar each box. Braces. Other pieces. Maybe those? we'll get you a brace, Arthur. They're a dollar a piece. Oh, these are cool. A lot of these have been cleaned up really well. Five bucks, ten bucks, eight bucks. I might be back here. Really good. Just received a parcel of vintage tools from eBay. Woohoo! Ah, oh, some of them got ripped off. Yeah. Philippines. Good to have you. Um, actually, if, if you go on to the handtoolfinder.com, it's a website I have set up for where to find hand tools. And it's all the locations I know of around the world where you can buy hand tools or meats like this and other places like that. Anyone want any uh, uh, block planes, spoke shaves? Arthur, back up. Out of the way, bud. One dollar uh, block plane parts. Whole bunch of levels. Whole bunch of planes. Oh, you're fine. Block planes. Let's come around here. There's some transitionals over here. Oh, you want to see that brace? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. This. Uh, where was that? Did he just buy the brace? Oh. <laughs> no, he's just wanted to show this on the video. That's so you can get up against a wall here and you can crank this around. It's also, a, some people just like it for the, the comfort of it, just a different way to hold it. But you can actually put it right into the uh, the base of, especially for like timber framing, things like that, if you're right up against a beam. Uh, they're very useful for that. One-on-one -on -one block plane, yeah. There's block planes all over the place here. So yeah, we did, here, let me just show you what we just did. We just came down one half of this row, and then there's both sides of this row, and then there's both sides of that row, and there's both sides of the next row, and then there's a half on the last row over there, plus all the tables over here. So we've got a lot of tools to go through. So if any of you see questions, go ahead and throw them up there. I'm gonna try and catch them. If I miss your question, go ahead and post it again. Um, I only see them for a few seconds after they pop up. So sometimes don't always get them. Uh, here's a bunch of eights. What's the difference from a block plane and a bench plane? Oh, a block plane is smaller. This is this is a block plane. Um, so they have a smaller base. Usually they're a low angle. Um, and so they're, these are more for the detail things like chamfers and whatnot. Whereas bench planes, 
are bigger. They're more of the two-handed variety that you're uh, doing most of your stock removal with and uh, often you're, you're finish shaving. There are a lot of router planes here today. I've seen several good deals on those. You said last night you were interested in screwdrivers. Yeah. Um, some block planes are bevel up, some are bevel down. Uh, there, there's a bunch of different types. There are all sorts of different block planes. A whole bunch of mortise chisels, pig stickers. Here's some fun saws over here. Uh, when buying a draw knife, I'm looking for one that still has an edge that I can use on it. Uh, a lot of times the edge is so worn off or sharpened so much that it's just not worth it. Then I'm looking for, do I want to bevel up, do I want to bevel down, do I want different handle styles? There's so many different types of, uh, so many different types of draw knives that uh, they, you you really start getting into them and um, you, you end up buying more and more and more of them. Here we've got uh, some favors from the uh, Pacific Northwest Tool Collecting Association. These are what they gave out last year at the national meet. Can you give a few prices and let us know the prices on ranges should be? I, I, I have, uh, I've been talking about prices if I see them. If you see something you want to know a price on, let me know. Um, pretty much everything here, if there's a price on it, it's a fair price. Um, you don't often see things here that where people are trying to steal. <laughs> you don't see someone's just trying to rip you off. Um, but you don't often see really, really good deals on things. Um, the prices here tend to be pretty average, pretty fair, um, to a little bit on the cheaper side. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got uh, three or four bevel down block lines. They're, um, they're not as common, but they do exist. Okay, let me uh, go over here. Uh, this, this is a donkey ears. So you can put your work in here and then plane down flush to bring it to the angle you want. Where are you at? I am in Peoria, Illinois at the National uh, Midwest Tool Collectors Association meet. They hold two of these a year, plus a whole bunch of local meets that have tool sales like this. Now, this is a really cool spoke shave. I love a little We're bit of detail away. carving on this. Now this, this will put the groove into a barrel that you can then fit the lid down into. Can you make your own draw knife? Sure. Actually, there's a couple good videos of making draw knives on YouTube. I don't have one up, but there are a few bunch of other ones. A whole bunch of old tri-squares. Some beautiful bracelets. Let me actually come back and dig through this stock. Check out these molding planes. Info on it. Yeah, um, if you go to P -N, uh, PNTC. No. Northwest Tool Collector. PNTC, yeah. Um, PNTC.org, I believe it is. I did a video where I went to their national last year. I'm not looking for anything particular today. I'm just kind of looking around. This will be cool. This would make a great restoration video except for that which would be fun to replace that's a cool old block line yeah check out these these molding planes like for crown molding and such cheer rail that's beautiful let's come on back over here arthur over here bud oh here's a couple good tables there's a thump whacker for you check out that big beast no, don't touch, bud. Oh, ooh, ooh, a dowel maker. Okay, this this is a dowel maker. So you put square stuff here, and you get a different bit that you can put in here. And when you crank this, it runs the cutter. And it's hollow all the way through the shaft so that you get the dowel coming out here. Um, so sometimes the cutters on this are worth as much as the whole dowel maker. Um, so yeah, they're they're not very common to come by, and I've been wanting to get one. They're they're a lot of fun to play with. Whole bunch of uh, step saws, stairs, stair saws. Some interesting designs. I haven't seen one quite like that before. Oh, that's more of like a veneer saw, actually. Just a slight, uh, don't play with it, bud. 
so many fun tools to look through, and I'm just, I'm still going back through and, and trying to find things that are like, oh yeah, I can buy that. <laughs> Another number eight. There are a lot of number eights here today. Big old slick. Oh, this is cool. There's a whole set of two cherries, uh, um, carving chisels, and a huge pile of them. Um, Six hundred eighty-five. It's, it's a lot of money, but it's a really good deal because there are just so many of them in these two tool rolls for that. Well, I'm not, but they still send me exactly what I buy. Still buy. Bunch of squirrel tails. Squirrel tails. These handles that stick out back like that. It's called a squirrel tail plane. And then beam drill, pile of other tools, and then those toolboxes are full of tools. <laughs> here, it's coming over here, bud. No, no, turn, turn, this way, this way. Oop, tripping. Hammers, hammers. Is it risky buying vintage spirit levels? Um, you check the level first, but there really isn't that much of an issue with spirit levels. They don't, they don't like go out. Um, the biggest problem is that the wood warps over time, but you can adjust that. But most of them, that's not a big issue. Um, but I mean, if you want a functional level, don't buy an antique. Just go to the hardware store and pick one up. Spirit levels are more for collectability. Wrenches, wrenches, wrenches. Brian, buy a crown molding plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to do a video showing off one of those big crown molding planes sometime, but uh, haven't gotten there yet. Okay, what is this? Oh, yeah. This is this is kind of cool. This you would carry on your belt, and you'd have your stone in here uh, for doing like uh, size out in the field, so you can resharpen the size as you're going. I think I'm going to give this to the old ads. I love these. Yeah, if you want to see one of these in use, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, come on. Um, Mr. Chickadee. He has a video showing you showing one of those. Uh, he was using a side to cut some grass down. Here's a whole set. 57 bucks for Irwin Bits. That's actually a pretty good deal. More draw knives. <laughs> it used to be. Bit and bobs and other things in the box. Let's come on over here, see what we got. A whole pile of draw knives. Torture device. <laughs> Frog gig. There's a couple more router planes. Over here, I think. Seventy-five, eighty-five dollars. Those are in really good shape and a little older collectibles. Oh, here's a beautiful pair of shears. Check those out. Shears are big scissors. Yes. Spoke shave. It's a great user. What a router plane! I actually have several videos on router planes. This is. The router plane here has a, a blade that sticks down, and the blade can cut out a, a parallel slot. So if you're cutting out the bottom of a groove or dado, or uh, in some cases, um, yeah, channels and whatnot, if you want to make them perfectly parallel to a higher plane, that's where you use a router plane. And I've got several videos on those as well as making one. What's that? I'm doing a live stream here. Oh. Although he's learning along. Although he's used a router plane, so. <laughs> Over here, bud. Saws. Ten dollars each for the pile. There's some good chisels in here. Might come back and look at it. Oh, here's dovetail chisel. Five dollars, uh, ten dollars. Some gouges, five dollars. Almost back where we started. Almost. I actually bought a cowbell 
I bought a tape measure for Arthur, and I'm probably going to be buying a hammer for Arthur here soon. Because he said he wants a hammer. And I don't think he has a hammer yet. Only this is Gary's JJ stock. Does. Yeah, only JJ has a hammer. There are a lot of plain parts here, so if you're ever looking for a particular part for it, the, these meats are the places to come. Whole bunch more draw knives. Don't forget, there's one tool that lives in this. Yeah, the tack hammers. Oh, this is really cool. There's one tool that I'll show lives this off. in the sea. This is a jigsaw. That's a jigsaw too. And what it has is this uh, magnet, magnet here that then will pull this blade down just a little bit. And this whole thing will then cut like that. Um, handheld, old fashioned saw. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. Uh oh, you broke it, bud. Oh, <laughs> Someone just broke his tape measure. Uh oh. Nope. Arthur, pick up the pieces. Here, I'm going to fix this while he does that. So, if you have any questions, ask me right now. Well, I fix a tape measure for my son. Here, go get the piece that rolled over there. Well, see if you can go find it over there. It's on the other side of the I'm going to have to buy him a new tape measure now. <laughs> he let this one explode. Am I going to have to get you a new tape measure now? Okay, bring that here, Arthur. Bring it here. We'll put it in my pocket. Let's see, what do you say? I track, buy a tack hammer for her. Yeah, I think the tack hammer's on the list. Ever run into an 81 scraper plane? Yeah, there's actually yeah, quite a few around here. Uh, parts, not so much. Um, I don't see parts that often. Though they are around. There's a lot of scraper planes here, though. Okay, put in my hand. Oh, do you want to carry these, though? Or should I carry them? You should. Okay, I'll carry them. <laughs> There, crisis averted. Let's get back to the tool set. Arthur, say hi. Hi. <laughs> so let's see. More auger bits. I want to do some blacksmithing. I want to build an outdoor shop one of these days and uh, do some blacksmithing and green woodworking. Come on out, Arthur. Yeah, it's a gorgeous day. We were expecting rain. It's a little windy, so I don't know if you're hearing my voice or if the wind is cutting in and out. I'm trying to shield it, but that's the way things go. A good old post drill. There's several post drills here. Over this way, bud. So we're not quite halfway through. Um, 81s go for all different prices, anywhere from like 30 bucks up to 130, depending upon quality and condition and collectability and other things that go into them. Greetings from the U. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, you should uh, start a meet. Uh, but most of the time, the only reason that there isn't a meet near you is you haven't started it yet. Um, and I, I, I know several people who want one of these near them, and so they just called up MWTCA or something else like that and said, hey, I want to meet near me and start organizing it. You just need a place for it, set up a time, and uh, we can get a meet near you. I had a friend down in Texas just do that last year, and he had the, the first MWTCA meet in Texas. So if you want one, look up MWTCA.org, become a member, and uh, set up a meet near you. There are a bunch of dovetail saws here. I haven't seen one recently. Oh yeah, there is a little dovetail saw right back here. That's a cute one. Oops, sorry, down, 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 there you go. Nice dovetail saw. Asking 55 bucks for it. A few scrub planes. Arthur, don't kick. I love digging through these boxes and finding things. You never know what you're going to come across. That little bit or bob that you didn't have that you needed. Yeah, I'm going to come back here and buy Arthur another tape measure. <laughs> I think this is where he bought the one 
that he just yeah. destroyed. But there's a reason why I buy the little $5 ones. Yeah, um, you can very easily spend a lot of money at these places. So, yeah. <laughs> I have spent a lot of money here myself. Oh, here's a cool rust table. Wow, he's sold a bunch of stuff on here. This is an old rat trap. Check this thing out. It's kind of cool. There are a bunch of shoulder planes here. Augers, drill bits. Oh, this, this is for debarking. So you can actually splay that between the wood and the bark and pry up the bark. Uh, 40, uh, five and a quarter you can get for as low as $25 and up to $60 depending upon the quality. A Stanley 40, though, those prices have gone through the roof now. Everyone wants a Stanley 40. Um, and so it's rare to find those under 100 now. What base? Yeah. Yeah, some of these people will move some of their stuff inside, some of them will not. Some of them will have different things that come inside, so you get to find different things outside. So on Thursdays at the national meet, they have an outside sale. And then on Friday and Saturday, they go inside. Yeah, so he's saying no inside setup. In other words, if you don't buy it today, it's not coming inside. Oh, here's an old sheep shearer. That's kind of fun. Yeah, actually, last one I was at, I went to the meet, but I flew in, so I actually had to mail everything I bought back to me. This time I'm driving, so that's kind of nice. Let's see what we got over here. If you, have, if you see anything, have any questions, let me know. I can always go back and take a look at it. Let's see, here's oh, Stanley number 40s. 30 bucks on a Stanley number 40. Um, it's missing that, but it's a great deal. That's, that's, that's a really good deal on a Stanley number 40. It works just as well without it. Yeah, you should set one up. Um, we're just looking for people who can set up a meet and we can make them happen. So definitely contact the people and, and get a meet set up near you. Let's come around here. Some number sevens. Two cherries chisel set. And they threw it off the goddamn four-story building to see if they had lost it at all. Take this. What's four times 40? Let's see. And they kicked my Stanley thermos off, and, and, and they said, well, if it's uh, here's about, it won't Stanley number 40, you know, and, uh, good condition, 90 bucks. See, that's, a, that's, that's actually a pretty good yeah. price. Um, put a lot of screws in. It was a time where you could pick those up for 10 bucks a piece. No one wanted them, and now they're... <laughs> Now everyone wants them. There's a beautiful infill. Oh, yeah. That is pretty. Let's see, what's the axe? 275. Infill planes are expensive, but everyone loves to collect them, and they're just beautiful. You don't get to see them that often. Sorry, I missed a comment. Do the vendors travel all over the country? Yes, um, most of these vendors will go all over the country to different meets. Um, and I've seen the same person out in Oregon that I saw in Pennsylvania. So, um, yeah. And there are meets like this all over the United States, um, except for like a couple places down south don't have them. These are all plain parts, knobs, and totes. Yes, it's the Midwest Tool Collectors Association, but there are meets all over the United States. The Midwest is just the name to it. There's also a Pacific Northwest Tool Collectors. There's a California Tool Collectors. There's a Colorado Tool Collectors. There's a Northeast Tool Collectors. Um, and most of those are just 
uh, smaller groups. None of them are quite as large as the as the uh, Midwest tool collectors. And there are Midwest tool collectors meets everywhere. And a lot of the meets from smaller groups are mixed up with other ones. There are several Midwest tool collectors meets in Indiana. This is kind of cool. So if you're ever looking for all of those plain parts, all the plain parts you could need. I was looking through there. Is it anywhere? In, yeah, there are several in Indiana. Um, there, there's one that's just outside of Indianapolis. There's one that's up by Fort Wayne, um, and they're, they're, they happen once a year. Uh, I think there's four different. I think that there there are four different um, North uh, Midwest Tool Collectors meets in Indiana. So definitely check it out. MWTCA.org. It's, it's a complicated website and it's really not easy to get around. Um, but if you also go to um, handtoolfinder.com, that's my website uh, where I list all of them and I have a map so you can actually look on the map and see all the locations around you. Yes, they're West Virginia. Virginia actually, West Virginia is a hot spot for hand tools. There are a lot of great places to buy hand tools in West Virginia. So, yeah, um, that whole area, there are quite a bit. Save your allowance, yeah. Cool. Go back to this. It's always fun to try and read the comments and keep up on this. Yeah, the Midwest Tool Collectors site uh, is really geared towards collecting and information, and there's a ton of information in the background um, about, you know, what is this tool? What is the background on it? What are the patents? And you can look up all that stuff. 130 bucks. That's actually a really good price. Mahogany infill. No, back up, Arthur. Sergeant Planer, 100 bucks. Their version of number eight. Here's another uh, router plane. This is something that, uh, that I actually have an extension for mine. You can put a block on there so you can reference out, especially if you're doing things like tenons. That's actually a really useful thing for it. Now we were talking earlier about what is this for? It's shaped like a plane, looks like a plane, but underneath you have this collet that would then spin on something. It's kind of an interesting setup. Love to know more about that if anyone knows. <laughs> Uh, fantastic for finding parts. There are a lot of parts here. So I just showed a table a little bit ago where he had collections of parts of all sorts of items. And if you can't find a parts here, then you talk to people and you ask someone behind the table, hey, I'm looking for a part for such and such. And they'll be like, no, I don't have one. But uh, Joe Schmo down there, he might have one. It's a good place to go look. Chisels. Ooh, lots of chisels. You mentioned you'd pick up... Um, if you can send me a message, I'll try and keep a look at it, but I'm really busy on this one. If someone's an MWTC game member and they can't make it here, I'll try and find things for people. Uh, but I don't, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of time to look for other people this time. I'd like to, but I'm pretty busy this, this trip. Man, a lot of good saws on here. But yeah, I don't buy things for people if they're not a Midwest tool collector. Um, because if you come to one of these events, uh, number one, you have to be a member of the Midwest tool collectors. Wow, that got really windy, sorry. Um, number one, you have to be a member of the Midwest tool collectors. Um, and then number two, you have to pay to get into the event. And that sounds crazy to someone who's just wanting to buy tools. Uh, but the Midwest tool collectors are a collecting association. So this is like a convention. You'd have to pay to get into a convention and you have to be a member to get into the convention. Um, and so um, I don't buy things from people who aren't members. Yeah, we're having fun with, with Arthur here. Say hi, Arthur. Hi! <laughs> he gets to come with me today. Let's see, what do we got over here? There's a collection of hammers. Now, my wife isn't here today, unfortunately. She's with the other two. We tried to make it so we could all come out for this one, but it just wasn't working out this trip. Maybe the next one. Another great infill. Let's see, what's this one? 225? And I can't read the name on that one. 
Oh, it's a Serbi. Serbi tools and full plane. Yeah, someone remade the the knob and tote on this. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Oh, and the the lever on here. Wow. Someone had fun remaking that thing. Some more hand saws. Oh, check out that vise. Wow. Rotates this way and that way. Stick that in your middle. That's beautiful. More hand saws. Okay, here we go. This is a beautiful little panel saw. I like that one. Another dovetail saw. Rabbit plane. Sorry about the wind. <laughs> I wish I could control it. Or put a windscreen on this. I actually have to think about that next time because I think I have a windscreen that might work for this. Which is the yeah, that little router. 45, 48 bucks. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I just hope that when I die, my wife doesn't sell my tools for what I told her I paid for them. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go, corner chisels for timber framing. Turning tools. Lots of molding planes. Yeah, dead cat. <laughs> I'm doing this on my cell phone, so I don't know if a dead cat would fit on my cell phone, but I think I have a microphone I can plug in next time, and I might have to give that a try. Um, Arthur, off the towel, off the blanket. More molding planes, and more molding planes. You never have enough molding planes. Yeah, check this out. These are these strips here are called boxing. They're made of boxwood, and boxwood is a very hard wood, very long-lasting. So if there's a, a small point that wear off very easily, they put in that strip of boxing, and it protects that piece. So Some carving chisels. Now here's a uh, dowel cutter or shave cutter. I want to make one of those. That make yeah. a good video on there. Be a, a fun video to put together. This is a lot of fun to play with. Oh wow, that's a cool compass. That's pretty. I'm boxing on the front. Be fun to make a wooden compass plane too. Well, yeah, the, uh, the interesting thing historically is that uh, uh, if you go out to the East Coast, uh, the East Coast got uh, a, a large amount of power tools that went in before World War II. And so it wasn't uncommon if you like to do woodworking, you knew someone who had a power tool you could use. And so a lot of the hand tools tended to die out on the East Coast. And then all of the tools left over from World War II then got devoted to the war effort. The West Coast didn't really get settled until power tools really came about. And so hand tools really never got out there. But the Midwest is a lot of farmers. And so the Midwest had a lot of hand tools that lasted a lot longer. And so because of that, you tend to be able to find hand tools a little bit easier on the West Coast. There's a lot of the collectible ones, the historical ones, you find those a lot more on the East Coast. Um, but yeah, this, this area, the, the Midwest, is one of the hotbeds for buying hand tools just because of the history behind it. So here we got, uh, let me turn this around, sorry. Yes, Arthur? Maybe a little later. Great resource. One of the things I do love coming about here is all of the information. So you can buy books that have what to do with it, or you find something you have a question about playing, you can say, hey, what is that? Tell me the history about it. And so there's always someone around who can tell you the history behind things. One of the big reasons I love coming to these, if you don't know about tools, this is the best place to learn. 50 bucks for a set of bits in the box. 
Oh, that's a beautiful shape. Another rotor plane. 85 bucks on that old one. Stan Lee. I like this one. Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah, that's an older one. That's pretty. That's actually a really good price. Here's a Stanley 81. You're asking about earlier. 55 bucks on that one. Angle bit. If I miss your comment and you have a question, go ahead and post it again. They, uh, they tend to disappear faster than I can take a look at. I love this old parts train. It's kind of cool. Parts. Parts. More parts. Let's see what we got over here. See, I was looking at buying this one, 10 bucks for number six. It's got a pretty solid crack right here. I'd have to braise that. That would make a really good restoration video if I trusted myself brazing. Is th there is that plane with the one screw on top in between the body and the blade. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you should come out. Uh, there, are, there are people who literally travel uh, from all over the U.S. and around the world. There are, there are people here from literally around the world who come to these meets. Um, MWTCA national meets are the biggest tool sale in the entire world, the big tool sale. Um, and so if, if you want hand tools, it's well worth the trip. And there are little people who, who come here from around the world. Um, even if you don't buy any tools here, it gets you in contact with the people who are about halfway through this whole thing and having a lot of fun here. I want to get this, uh, whoop, watch out, bud, the, uh, the record version of the, the 45 here and play with one of these just to, to compare it. Because that's basically what uh, uh, Lee Valley did with theirs. They did a, a few adaptions off of that. Spoke shaves, another compass plane. Here's a chamfer plane. Check out this one. Oh, someone filled this in. Oh, see that wood plug in there just turns into a regular plane. You take that plug out, and you can actually adjust this head, adjust this head up and down, so you can create the chamfer you want to cut. Another Stanley 40, 75 bucks. Nice price. That's that's a good deal. I'm sorry. Go that way, bud. That way. Arthur, that way. Let's see what we got over here. Okay, brace yourself for this. Bracing, 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 bracing. Here's another one of those wall braces. So you can get right up against the wall with this. With the shaft here, so you turn this to actually rotate the brace. to get into those tight spaces. Egg beater drills. Lots of egg beater drills. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking about doing that one because it would make a really good video. I've had a lot of people asking me, you know, how do you fill the cracks? I've never done it, so it'd be a good one to play with. Here's some more router planes. Arthur, over here, bud. Oh, he's running. Oh, he lost his paper. Did you lose your paper? <laughs> yeah, the hive mind. Uh, wood by right hive mind. It's where I ask a lot of questions about, hey, would you like to see this? We have any ideas? Uh, but then it's also a good place for people to show off what they've got. Tongue and groove plane. I brought mine to show off. In candle gouges. Oh, these are kind of fun. These are uh, saw, saw sharpening jigs. So you can put your file in here. It holds it right at the exact angle you're looking for for sharpening it. So you can set the flame angle you want on here. A lot of people really like saw sharpening jigs. I find them to be kind of a waste of time, but everyone different. <laughs> lots of axes and lots of hand saws here. 
he's got a lot of hand, hand saws. And most of these have been sharpened, cleaned up, and restored, ready to go. Daddy? Yeah, yeah, sending him back to Australia. I do know some people who come here from overseas, they actually will they'll bring a, a crate like this and box it up and ship it back. It's easier to do that than it is to take it in a bag. Decorative axes. Those are some cool heads. Oh, this is cool. This is an old brace. And the head on this, these heads will pop out. Except for, oh, there's the pin. It's looking for it. The pin here you can push in. And these are the sockets that go into it. So this will pop, pop in there and that pin fits into that socket. So you can actually put your own bits in these. And so this is this is a common way of doing drilling before we got with the regular uh, modern ones. So you often see a lot that have a proprietary bit sizes or whatever the maker decided to make it like. Those are, those are a lot of fun to play with. Now don't touch Arthur, back up. Okay, I'm gonna show you this jigsaw right here. This is kind of cool. But it's got this anchor motif here as well as the whole base is an anchor. But then the the line would come around, oh, sorry, back up. Line would come around on here to run this whole thing. Arthur, off. Huh. Oh, that's cool. Just seeing how this whole thing plays. Arthur, no. This would have, okay, you have the saw that would go on here, and the leather line comes up through this pulley, around through this pulley, down through this, and then back over to this pulley, and then back up to the saw blade. And then you have this oscillator that will then move that belt back and forth and back and forth and back and forth at the same spot. It's kind of an interesting design. Okay, let's move on over here. Come on, Arthur. This way. No, leave it alone. Yeah, I'm having a lot here. So if anyone's near Peoria, this is open until I think noon, and then I'm giving my talk here at 2.30, and that's completely free to come. You don't have to be a member to come to the talk I'm doing today. And uh, yeah, we're at the Embassy Suites, East Peoria. Plum Bobs. Dividers. Shoulder plane. Screwing planes. Earth on this table is Winchester. Winchesters. All this is Winchester. Very good, young man. Say hi, bud. Hey, what's this? You know what these are? Huh? What is that, Arthur? Check out these. So six, seven, yeah, five and a half, five. Look. Cool. I definitely want one. Well, you know what? Do you want me to buy you one, bud? No, we can't buy them. Oh, well, there's something over there you buy. <gasps> what do you say, bud? Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> You're all here, bud. You know how you got home around. Keep you busy. <laughs> Thanks. You just love them. <laughs> Someone's happy. <laughs> Ohio Tool Company study. Yeah, he's uh, doing a study on Ohio tools. And so all of these have numbers on it. And you can actually uh, know where they are in the study. I got some slides and tape. Yeah. Yeah. You selling them? You can put them in your pocket, Arthur. Some beautiful plow planes. Sorry if I missed comments. Hi from Portugal. Hey. Um, yeah, a lot. Of, there aren't very many trashy planes here you will occasionally find one or two here i'll hold that for you are you gonna put them in your pants pocket here See how he's... <laughs> um, most tools are, are usable if they're not to the point where they can be restored they, don't, they aren't generally sell up here um, i've been showing prices on some things if there's something particular you want to see let me know um, when they come up i show them on there so there's a lot of rule collectors here Arthur! Wrenches? 
Yeah, you, you gotta carry them somehow. Yeah, all you gotta fall out of both pockets. Plain totes. Brand new auger bits. Brand new old auger bits. Oh, here's a cool table. Arthur! Arthur! <laughs> you can put them in your shirt pocket, you know? Look, Arthur. You got a pocket in your shirt. Here, he's he's trying to figure out where to put these, how to carry them. Too big for his pockets. How about bag? I have a couple videos on using a Stanley 80. I don't have an 81, but it's basically the exact same thing and how it's used. Would you like a bag? Um, actually, I think I have a video on using an 81. You have to look that up. Uh, here's some old uh, bed rocks. 605. Ooh, here's an aluminum. I gotta love the old aluminum planes. They're the heaviest thing I ever carried. The good friend who collects aluminum planes. Yeah, here's a buffer. <laughs> so you hand crank this little buffing wheel here. Close up on the back. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, here, there was one over here. I think he had a 81. Ah, here you are. Here's the uh, Stanley 81 right here. So this one just has the lever cap. This is the front. I, I know people think planes go this way, but this actually goes this way. So the lever cap is still here on the front. It comes on the back. The big difference is you don't have a screw that goes into this. So this is kind of more like the Stanley number 12 that I show in my most recent video, as the plane is flat across um, in the way it goes on. So, yeah. Here we go back over here. Oh, let's see, where are we at? This is an absolutely gorgeous day today. Uh, just really beautiful out here, having a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, did we do that one? I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, we haven't done that one over here. So let's go take a look at this one over here. Yes, there is. You need to come. Glad I can help you, man. Oh, yeah, he's stand, selling a whole collection of 2, 2C, two 3, 3C, three 4, 4C, four, 4.5, four 5, 5C, four and 5.5C, and 5.5C, five, five 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 and 5.5C, five and 6C, five 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 and five and five five six, six 7C, seven, seven 8C. Eight, eight uh, so he's, he's selling the whole collection together <laughs> as, a, as a single piece. And I don't remember if he has a price on it. Uh, he has 1800 on the whole collection. Most of them are type 11, but a few others. Pieces and parts, 45s and others. Stanley 50. Arthur, careful, bud. Yeah, see, that's what I love about the group. There's always someone there who help you out. A lot of good information back in there. And then we've got all of these planes. <laughs> oh, right here. Right, Arthur. You're fine, bud. Let's go. we got more to go. So now we're going to go over here. Yeah, there are a lot of things here. There aren't a lot of rare tools. You'll see a lot more rare tools tomorrow inside. Uh, there's a different collection that'll be there is from here. Just, so, just, which one? Just, ah, check out this pencil sharp. Right <coughs> yeah, that one. That is cool. See the, the blades here? So basically it's a float blade. 
Well, Oops, sorry. <laughs> Turn this so you can see better. <laughs> Pencil sharpener. That is cool. Arthur, Arthur, don't spin around. You're going to hit someone. <laughs> Lots of brass. Horse bells. Uh, rope maker. There was one over here, wasn't there? Yeah. Actually, a couple of them. Three strand. Four strand. So there's some rope makers. Hand powered rope maker. <laughs> That's a video I'd like to do sometime. Arthur has a hiccup. I think he might. He ate too many cannolis today. Another old pencil sharpener. Or no. Old horn. Here's some hammers, Arthur. Oh, thank you. Now we're having fun today showing these off. What's that? You have the cheapest collection. Collection? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to save a little bit of money that way. Come on, bud. We gotta finish up this talk through, bud. Gotta f yep, gotta get him his whole tool collection today. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got over here. Oh, here's a trap. Check out that old trap. Those are big side axe. Oh, check out this compass plane. Boat plane, boat maker's plane. 1852. That is pretty. Here's a long fret saw. Bow tension in back. That is pretty. That is beautiful. Our surveyor's measure. So this is actually like a tape measure. So you can pull this out and it's a specific length chain. And then along the chain, there are these identifiers that hang off that then measure, that tell you how long, or how far along the chain you are. So a surveyor would use that to stretch out an area. Oh, check out that axe. There's the head, the shaft to the handle. <laughs> Arthur, don't spin. These are the good ones where you get to dig in the back of a van. <laughs> Here's a cool brace. So the handle, both handles are out of sync, so you can actually rotate around the center point. A bit of fun to get used to, but once you try it a few times, it uh, actually is rather enjoyable to use. Let's see. So have any, uh, did I miss any comments here? Okay, good. Just making sure I didn't run past anything. Does anyone see something they want to question on? There's a good collection of user planes here today. I mean, anything from, like this Sergeant. That's actually a really good user. Number five, um, not a lot of people would want it for collecting, but for functional, it, it'd be a, a very good tool to have in the shop. There's a guy over there who's selling them for five and ten dollars a piece. Need a good bit of restoration, but they're still functional planes. Come on over here, Arthur. <laughs> 